Hey there! My name is Irene and I work as an SEO assistant at Template Monster. Do you want to be a successful copywriter in public and a monster in SEO? Today, I'm going to teach you some basic SEO tips for writing a blog post that ranks on search results. Promise, this knowledge won't hurt you at all, my dear bloggers and copywriters. On the contrary, this is going to be a sheer pleasure. How, you may ask? Listen closely. Once you've defined the goal and topic of your post, and you've done that already, right? I'm sure you're staying on top of things, so you probably chose the most burning topic on the minds of internet surfers. In case you have no idea about the latest happenings getting the online community excited, you surely know who's your daddy. So don't be shy, ask Google. Darling, you know what they say, you have to kiss a lot of frogs before you find your prince. So, before we start optimizing like crazy, tell me, who do you want to reach with your blog posts? You should know your audience well enough to push the right buttons. Are you writing for potential new readers, regular readers, the industry influencers, or maybe specific audience targets? Just focus on a specific segment and hit them hard with your creative writing. Keep in mind, there is such a thing as search intent. Why do people go online to look for things? All the keywords that you target should have the same search intent. People who search for those three to five terms and phrases are all trying to accomplish the same goal or very, very similar goals. Knowing who you're trying so hard for is also good for your safe keyword research practices. And now for the cherry on top of the cake, keyword research. What you need is three to five keyword phrases for a single blog post. But where do you get the keywords? Patience, we're almost there. The first stage is keyword suggestions. You don't have to use complicated tools to get ideas for keywords. As a foreplay, use Google Suggest or Autocomplete. It always suggests something exciting. For example, it offers variations and search phrases that people used before searching for information related to your post. Keyword Planner from Google AdWords is like getting to the second base of your keyword research. It will give you the pleasure of more keyword variations as well as statistical data such as search volume, competition levels and pricing policies for advertisement. SEMrush is by far the most popular one and in my opinion, it's like getting to the climax of your keyword research. It's a very versatile tool used for assessing the keyword rankings, site positioning and content creation with keywords. Ahrefs is for those who want to get their SEO to a new level. It's a powerful tool set for exploring backlinks and conducting SEO analysis. Ahrefs has a site explorer that allows you to enter in a URL and check the URL's backlinks and everything from organic keywords to search data to pay-per-click data as well. Actually, there are plenty of other tools for keyword research. Play with all of them to choose the one that suits you best. The second stage is to select the right keywords. Now, we will be crunching the numbers you get from the keyword research tools. Numbers are boring, I know, but blogger SEO optimization is not all fun and games, darlings. If you've done your homework well, you should have a list of keywords to select from. Ideally, you have the following data to analyze. Search volume, or average monthly searches, shows how much these keywords are searched for. When it comes to keyword search volume, there are two primary factors to take into consideration – volume and competitiveness. Keywords with higher volumes mean more potential exposure, but will likely be much more competitive, so it will be harder to rank for these terms. Competition data tells you how many advertisers are bidding to show their ads in the search results for a given keyword. If your blog is brand new, start with targeting low-volume, low-competition keywords to gain some domain authority. On the contrary, if your blog already has strong organic rankings, 
try more competitive keywords to maintain your positions. Also, there are a few other criteria you should consider if you're using a combination of keyword research tools. For instance, SEMrush has keyword difficulty data that shows how hard it will be for you to rank with a specific keyword. Google AdWords provides the click-through rate metrics. The click-through rate opportunity shows what other features are in the search results. Things like images, news boxes, ads, videos up at the top, instant answers that's going to draw clicks away from your competition to get users to click on your result. If your blog can't compete in popularity with Google yet, what you want from your keywords list is relevance to the topic, medium to high search volumes, low to medium competition rates. Don't forget about the low keyword difficulty and high click-through rate opportunity to contribute to your success. Your keyword phrase should be no longer than three to four words. Remember, people are lazy and you have to think from their point of view. Make lists and match the keywords with a particular search intent. And remember, practice makes perfect, my dear copywriters. Okay, after hours of mixing and matching, finally you'll get your magic keyword phrases. But how do you use them for a blog post, you may ask? One of these keywords is your primary keyword phrase. So that's going to be matched in the title and the headline and the URL. Also, you need two to four secondary keywords to insert into the meta description and image alt tags and the content itself. Now, what if you've already written a post on a similar topic, let's say in the past six months or a year ago? Show your people what a writer you are. For this, link the older posts to the new one. That's called internal linking. All it takes is to include the link into the body of your new post and use one of the selected keywords as an anchor. Links? Anchors? What? Oh, well, now we're going to talk about a few common mistakes some bloggers and copywriters make once in a while. The first, no outbound links in the body of your post. So, if you link out to another website, it's an outbound link. I'm sure that throwing a few relevant links into your post will be a picnic when you have the right keywords at your fingertips. Google has officially removed the limit of 100 links per page, but don't get too carried away. The count of links on your pages should be proportional to the amount of content. Let's say if you're writing a 25,000 word post, then even 250 links would be sufficient. The second mistake is long anchors. This is when the size does matter. The average length of an anchor text is up to eight words, but know your limits. Keep it as short and relevant as possible. The next is too many links to the same page with a single blog post. One is enough. Lots of similar links pointing to the same page can be seen by Google as a sign of automation. The next, broken links. How is that even possible? All it takes is to copy and paste the link address from a web browser input field into the code. The next one is mismatched links and anchors. Why on earth would someone put a link to Google and anchor it as Wikipedia? Makes no sense, right? Anyway, the experts suggest that keyword-rich anchor text still continues to influence search rankings, even though, as everything in SEO, you can take some information with a grain of salt, but don't take it that lightly. As you see, SEO for copywriters is no rocket science. Hopefully, you will use these tips further on. Good luck with that. Laters, darlings.